a mind map as your tarot journal entry. This is more about the process and the finished product. It's about how they talk to each other. It's a visual medium, have fun with it. Hello everybody, it's Sylvie, welcome or welcome back to Tarot Magpie. I hope you're doing all kinds of good. I am hugely excited about today's video because this is the first instalment in a how to read tarot series that I have been plotting and planning for a little while now. I think that what I have to share is a little bit different from most of the how to read tarot recommendations that we often see. I'm really sharing my methods for drawing out different layers and different perspectives from each of the cards and kind of sharing some ways for connecting them all together in a reading. Today the focus is a method for reading a tarot spread with a mind map, which is something I've been doing a lot of recently in the last few months. I've shared a fair bit on here on YouTube, I think I've shared over on Instagram a bit. I've been really enjoying it. So firstly, to give you a quick bit of context for my style of reading before we get into it in case you're new here. As a person, I am always on the lookout for a thread of logic in pretty much everything I come across. It's how I formulate my thoughts and ideas. I can't help it, it's just how my brain goes about its day. So I really love to find or create a framework to organize my thinking and gather my ideas about everything tarot included. So this series of videos is going to be exactly that. It's going to be a collection of frameworks that I've either come up with or adapted from something else to use when reading tarot. Even if you already have your tried and true methods or you tend to read from a purely intuitive perspective, I think you can get something out of this series. Finally, quickly, before I really get into today's video, I just wanna make it crystal clear that I do not believe that there is a right or a wrong way to read tarot. What matters is what works for you in your relationship with the cards, what you're looking to get out of any given reading. I would love to hear how these ideas work out for you and how you adapt them and make them work for your own personal practice. To kick things off today, I am sharing how to read tarot by creating a mind map as your tarot journal entry. Like I say, this is something I've done quite a lot of recently. I've got really into it and I have created something of like a system for doing it, which is what I'm gonna share with you today. It's basically data visualization for tarot. So if you're more of a visual learner or you just like a good graph, this one's for you. I know it sounds like I'm joking about the graph, but I love me some data visualization. I love good graph. I love a good infographic. That's beside the point. Let's get into it. I am going to share with you the kind of system that I've created. System is doing a lot of heavy lifting here. I have broken it down into something that is easy to follow, but it's not that rigid when I'm doing a reading for myself. I think this style of uh, interpretation with the mind map works really well for these big patchwork spreads that I've also been enjoying. So that is what I will work through as an example for you. Let's get into it. So welcome to my tarot journal. I've got here, these are a couple of mind maps that I've done. I think this one I did in a video. Uh, yes, it was in my playing with the Prairie Majesty Oracle. This is another one I did for myself. And you can see the question I asked for this reading was just, what are the vibes? I really like using a mind map for something that is a bit less specific as a question. It works well for me with a kind of, what is the vibes? What do I need to hear? Or just if I have something more like a statement, like it could just be, I feel really stuck pull a bunch of cards, see what comes up, see what connections your mind is able to make in this kind of more open style of reading. When I sat down to break down how I do this mind map thing, I broke it up into kind of four elements. So we've got grouping ideas, the ways that you choose to group different thoughts or different themes in the cards, always cross-reference the cards to find commonality between them, and group those things together. Secondly, there is the relationships between those ideas, so the ways that they interact and interconnect, what really makes this 
kind of format work well for me and for my brain is the way that you interconnect them and mesh them together. And then finally, it's the visual aspect of a mind map, which after all is kind of the whole point of a mind map. So directionality, where the arrows are going, you can bring in things like color coding, you can do little doodles if you want, but really make the most of this visual medium rather than like long form paragraph journal entry style of writing. I think what is gonna be best for this video is if I pull some cards and kind of talk it through as I do it and then I can write it up. So I am going to do a patchwork style spread. I'm gonna pull cards from some of my current favorite decks and just things that are on my desk. This is the Every Little Thing You Do Is Magic Tarot, and I've pulled the Nine of Swords. Love that, that's nice and cheery. From the Tarot of a Moon Garden, I pulled the Queen of Wands. From the Spirit Animal Tarot, Bear, Guardian of Fossils. I think Guardian is King, but I'll have to check. This is the Song of the Grandmother's Oracle. I always like to pull some Oracle decks in and this is Grandmother Rosemary and the keyword for that is source. Right, well, since this one jumped out, I'm gonna grab this from the Prairie Majesty Oracle and this is Prairie Soil with Hold. What riches do I carry within? And just to confirm, the Guardian of Fossils is equivalent to the King of Pentacles in the spirit animal tarot. Okay, I've got all my cards out. So firstly, grouping your ideas. Whether you turn over your cards and you have like a hundred different thoughts instantly leaping to mind, or you get that kind of internal radio static that I hope I'm not alone in. Sometimes I pull over a card and I just have no idea what it's trying to tell me. The first step that I like to do when I'm creating a tarot mind map is to group together categories of ideas and information. To get a little bit more technical for a second, I would like to introduce to you the concept of lumpers and splitters, if you are not already familiar with them. So in pretty much any subject with a need to categorize, so something like botany is a good example, categorizing types of plant, there are the lumpers and there are the splitters. Essentially, you can either lump ideas together by grouping them broadly where the differences are less important than the shared similarities, or you can split ideas and information along the lines of more precise definition. So the hair splitters will create a new category to accommodate what they consider to be key differences, as opposed to the lumpers who prefer those broader unifying ideas. The degree to which you lump or split will vary according to how you individually process information and what your aims are. Obviously we're translating this into tarot terms, so it would change from reading to reading. It depends what the theme of the reading is and what kind of reading you're doing. Sometimes you feel like you need to go really in depth. Sometimes the cards you pull give you a message like loudly and clearly and so a few broader notes are gonna do. So if I'm grouping these cards, let's see, we've got the Nine of Swords, which is quite distressing. We've got the Guardian of Fossils and Hold. I feel like these group together because we've got this sort of, especially with Guardian, the keyword that they've chosen for the, for the kings in this deck, together with hold, also what riches do I carry within, there's this little crown here even, and then obviously the fossils as pentacles in this deck with the prairie soil, those naturally seem to fit together. From my perspective, I didn't ask any kind of question, I just pulled some cards. Uh, here, Grandmother Rosemary with source, I think source also really fits with what riches do I carry within, and the idea that the soil is underneath us, the soil supports us, I think we can totally see the soil as as source, as well as also rosemary grows in the ground. That feels like it fits. More than what you see, remember who you are, hear your form, love itself. Again, more than what you see, there's a lot below the surface. And then we bring in our Nine of Swords and our Queen of Wands. So we've got two different suits. I think I would totally group these two together, the Nine of Swords with this source, with again this, this more than what you see, because the swords is the suit of the mind, it's not something tangible, it's not something tactile, it's not something material, 
it's not something visible, it's it's your thoughts, it's your ideas. And so these I think also group together in that kind of sense. And then, I mean, you could group the Queen of Staffs, Staffs and the Guardian of Fossils just on the basis that they're both court cards, especially maybe if you read court cards exclusively as people, you might wanna group them that way. Um, the Queen of Staffs feels like a little bit of an outlier in my first my first impressions, my first ideas about these cards that I'm pulling. The Queen of Staffs is usually, she's passionate, she's charismatic. I think she also fits with this like earthiness, but she doesn't feel like she fits with um, Grandmother Rosemary. So this is where you've got that kind of like lumping and splitting idea. It's like, would I, would I put these all in the same category? And then this one over here. But then this is kind of bridging the gap because it's, it's grounded by nature, it grows in the ground. But, but that more than what you see, it's like it's bridging the gap between the airy, ephemeral swords, and then these feel quite grounded. Like even the Queen of Staffs, Queen of Wands, I think of this energy as something that can get a little bit, a little bit larger than life. It can get a little bit intense, but it still feels quite grounded to me. I don't know, maybe it's that balance of like water and fire. Uh, if you're reading them elementally, like the queens being water, it feels very, it feels more material. So there's these three that feel very real. And then this nine of swords that very much isn't, it's not real in the same sense. It's not something you can touch. It's not something you can hold. It's just your thoughts kind of eating you alive. So there's some grouping. <laughs> I also totally could read into the guidebooks, especially especially for the oracle decks, which is one reason I really like blending tarot and oracle here, because I have my personal meanings for the traditional 78 tarot cards. Oh, you could also do like a hierarchical thing. And then it's even kind of cyclical because I just am thinking this because of how I've got the cards positioned. It's a visual medium, have fun with it. Like I like moving things around. So we've got this prairie soil, this is like at the bottom. And then this rosemary is growing from the soil. And then in like a hierarchical sense, you'd put the queen and then the king. And then I, I don't know where this swords goes. It's kind of ephemeral. It's kind of everywhere. But then because this is king of pentacles, he's like back here at the base. So you've almost got this kind of cycle happening if you want to look at it that way. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So those are some ideas for grouping. Like I was saying before I distracted myself, you could look at guidebooks. I usually would if I was doing this, you know, on my own time for myself, especially with the Oracle decks because they bring in some interesting ideas and perspectives that are not necessarily front and center in a tarot deck, especially with a deck like this that asks you a question within it. I think that's really fun to include in like a mind map spread. But remember as well throughout this whole process, I mean, remember that I'm not your mum. Uh, you could do whatever you want. But um, these are your personal notes. If you know what you mean by certain keywords, if you know the situation that you're reading about, you might not need to like, if you're writing this out, you might not need to write a lot of detail. You can just write a couple keywords where you know what they mean and that still captures a lot of information. Again, there is no single correct way to do anything to do with tarot, but this like system I've come up with is a very loose system. It's a strategy more than anything else. The next key thing is the relationships between your different ideas and groups and, and the categories that we've just come up with. You wanna make sure that your mind map reflects how those different things are related to each other. And for me, that's where my mind maps kind of really start to take shape. So I usually do that first grouping step. Honestly, kind of instinctively when I'm pulling the cards, I'll either think it through while I move the cards around like I just did for this video or I'll do like a bullet list as well on a post-it note, love me a post-it note. I'll do a bullet point list of the different themes and ideas that I'm seeing across different cards. It really is that cross-referencing thing because we could totally take each card in isolation and be like what does each card mean but I think it's more interesting to look at the shared aspects between different cards. And even within that, the cards that seem really opposite to each other, I think that is still a shared aspect. So, so you've got the prairie soil with hold, which is below ground. What riches do I carry within? It's the idea that there's something hidden or deep down that is valuable. 
And then you've got the Nine of Swords, which is all up in the air. It's all, you're spending too much time in your head with your thoughts and these things that are not material, physical. And it's all kind of a product of your own, your own mind. You're doing it to yourself in the nicest possible way. I think that's why the Ten of Swords gets so scary. It's because these things seem so huge and life-threatening when you're coming up with them and they only exist inside your brain. Like there's only so much space. So these do seem kind of opposite in that sense. And then you could also flip that and say, oh, these do align because there is wisdom in what you are afraid of and what you're worrying about. Or maybe not wisdom, but there is, there's significance there. It's something you care about. It's something you care about doing well or keeping safe or the people that you care about and the way that you want your future to unfold. If you wanted to put like a positive spin, especially on something like the Nine of Swords, you could totally take this card, what riches do I carry within? It's like a question to reflect back on this Nine of Swords of, okay, what is my anxiety telling me? What is my fear telling me? What is this thing that I can't stop thinking about? Why is it here? Just an example, the point that I'm making is that that's a relationship between these two cards. It's not just about, you know, fear over here and then hidden depths over here. It's about how they talk to each other. Often I find that there is a theme or an idea that connects different cards in different ways. So when it comes to this idea of, of grounding, you know, the prairie soil and the garden of fossils, these are grounded in the sense of being about the earth. We've got the guardian of the earth suit, we've got a literal representation of the earth, kind of similar here with the rosemary, it grows from the ground. And then there was what I said about the queen of staffs who feels not so, not grounded specifically, but she's, she's real, she's present. It's the opposite of something like the nine of swords, which is very transient and very intangible. So they all exist in relation to the idea of groundedness, but in different ways. So the relationship between the Nine of Swords and the Prairie Soil regarding groundedness is, the, is different to the relationship between the Prairie Soil and the Guardian of Fossils. I hope that makes sense, but this is where I start to pull my actual mind map together. So I am going to work through an example. Right, so one of the key themes that I came out with was groundedness, for lack of a better term. What else did I pull out from this? Oh, the idea of like hidden depths. Okay, and then there was this idea of like uh, something real and tangible and material versus something that's, that's not tangible. Okay, this is how I prefer to do them. Instead of writing down my five cards and finding connections between them that way, I prefer to start with the connections. It does mean that I end up writing, for instance, uh, Nine of Swords, I might put that in three or four different places on a mind map. That's what works for me. This is more about the process and the finished product. And I find this a more productive way of creating a mind map is to, when it comes to writing it out, I start with kind of themes and connections. I also like to use a different color to signify whether I'm talking about a card or an idea. So I think Rosemary is connected to groundedness, but also this idea of hidden depths, which is also true for the Nine of Swords is about hidden depths. And I think also um, prairie soil, also hold. I haven't even talked about the keyword for this, but I'm just gonna write soil here, which is also, it's groundedness and hidden depths. Then the material versus the immaterial is very much the Nine of Swords again, was like a big thing that I was coming up with there. Yes, so we have the King of Pentacles, groundedness, and, and then the Queen of Staffs. She feels like a bit of a wild card in all this. I am also noticing visually how well these three almost like we've got the the many like these are like a reversal of each other and this has got the roots in it even and then visually the way the nine swords are stacked visually these all look quite similar oh god and then i had that idea of of, of hierarchy and of the guardian of fossils being the top and the bottom of the hierarchy and it all being cyclical when i get to this step where i am getting my ideas down pen to paper and also starting to visualize the relationships between them this is where i might realize that i have either lumped or split kind of too close to the sun and that i either have too many very similar ideas or too few overly broad 
categories. For the time being, I am going to work with this because I think it makes for a good example for the purposes of this video. This is not the most functional mind map so far because we've got this little material versus immaterial island over here, which is only really connected by the Nine of Swords existing in two places. And this is where that big thing of interconnectedness comes in. So you might notice at this point in the mind map that you have kind of satellites of information and you've got themes or ideas that are kind of fleshed out between each other, but don't interconnect broadly. And this is where it's really helpful to relate things back to your question, which is where I maybe missed a trick because I just pulled cards at random. I didn't have a question for this video, so I can't do that. All right, so as a scribbly little idea, when I talk about little satellites, so you might have your central idea and then you have like a few key ideas and then you have different ideas coming off each of those and maybe like one or two of them connect, but then over here you've got this little like satellite of information, which it's like you're going deeper down each of these ideas, but you're not really bringing them back for the overall picture. So you've got these little like pockets that are quite fleshed out, but they don't interconnect more broadly. And then as an example in this, reading this is over here kind of on its own it's only re really being connected with that nine of swords which actually just redraw that all right so i did what the nine of swords up here after all because there was this more than what you see written on the rosemary card which is what i liked next to the nine of swords and then i think where is our king of pentacles here is groundedness but elementally it's also it's air and earth, and then we've got fire and water, so we've got this kind of balance of elements. Fire and water are the complement to each other, and then air and earth are the complement to each other. That brings these two together, and so you can see we've kind of tied everything together a little bit more. Here with soil, with hold as the keyword, there's that idea of support, which I think ties in with groundedness, but isn't the same thing as groundedness. And I think the idea of this material versus the immaterial also ties in with balance. So this is where it had the nine of swords, which is very, very in your head versus something like the, the soil card or the guardian of fossils, which is very earthy. And then overall, because we've got the, the nine of swords here, which is everything's terrible because you're too in your head. The overall kind of consensus of the rest of them is that what you do in the real world matters more than what you do in your head. And I don't know how I am gonna tie that into this, but I suppose it's that idea of, of the material versus the intangible. And that when it comes to balance, this, this group of readings, the air here is, is literally overwhelmed by what I'm seeing as, as the more material of the rest of the cards. So the Nine of Swords is being outweighed by the rest of the cards and this is very messy, my handwriting is not neat, but I hope you can see that everything is a little more interconnected. Like we've now got the Nine of Swords in a few different places and we've got these other ideas that I think are tying things together a little bit more. So soil and rosemary are connected by this idea of groundedness, this idea of hidden depths. Rosemary is connected to the Nine of Swords, which is also connected to the Queen of Wands. And the Queen of Wands is connected to the King of Pentacles as well as the Nine of Swords. Like it, it all interweaves a little bit more. And then the, the final, I guess, key thing about a mind map is that it's a visual medium. So things like color coding, arrows are really useful. I haven't yet done any directional arrows on this because I'm working it out as I go. Once you have your ideas, you've grouped them together, you've found connections to visualize the relationships that you wanna focus on. This is where directionality and flow are useful to kind of further refine the reading that you're getting. It visualizes the nature of the relationships between the ideas and not just the fact that those relationships exist. So I think hidden depths is a big idea here and so I might decide that all of these are like outward arrows to the cards. The idea of material versus immaterial. I also think there's something here between the idea of hidden depths and the tangible versus the intangible because even though the roots are below ground, they are very real, they are very material, but they're also hidden and they're a mystery. So those come together to this idea of mystery, which I think again 
connects to the Nine of Swords and I'm specifically thinking of the Nine of Swords as like a a nighttime card with what is scarier in the dark because you can't see it properly. And then here, the roots are considered a good thing. The roots hold the soil together. The roots seek out nutrients and resources, but you can't see what they're doing. It's all very mysterious. The soil is, is support. Balance feels like a secondary idea, so I've got the, the cards pointing toward balance, whereas here this idea of hidden depths feels like a central idea, so I've got the arrows pointing outwards. Again, this makes sense for me, these are my notes, you would do it differently I'm sure. So the Queen of Wands feels undeniable. Undeniable is a good word for what I was trying to articulate about the Queen of Wands before, because Wands are your passions, they're what fuels you, and I think you can be fueled by an ideal, but I think it always comes from something real, as in materially real. You know, thoughts are real, feelings are real, but they're not in the world in the same way. And I think, I think that's the thing about the wands, is it's tied to something materially real, even if what you're passionate about is not necessarily the real thing. You can be passionate about a philosophy or an ideal, but I don't know if you can be passionate about something that has no basis in the real world. So, undeniable is the word that I've come out with uh, for the Queen of Wands. Ooh, and then I like this, remember, remember who you are, linking with that undeniable. And I think also, what you think is not who you are what you think informs who you are, but what you think is not who you are. So if you're used to long form written journaling, like pulling a card and writing out how it responds to a spread position, I think this format can seem overwhelming and messy and it's completely the opposite of a linear kind of question answer structure, which is kind of the point. There are so many connections, you can dive in anywhere and you will eventually like work your way back around and through. Tinkering is good, adjustments are good. You saw I came up with some stuff while I was looking at the cards and then I came up with other stuff as I was working through it and writing. I haven't even looked at guidebooks, but that's the next thing I would do would be to look at the guidebooks, see what else they have to say, especially for the oracle cards, but I would do it for all of them probably. I like these to be long readings for myself. And that's where I'll often find that maybe I'd look in the guidebook for the Grandmother Rosemary card and I would find in that guidebook entry something that relates back to an idea that was prompted from a completely different card. And that's where it gets really juicy and you get to see these sort of recurring themes popping up in different guidebooks. A lot of it even just comes down to word choices and the same specific language choices have been used across guidebooks for these different cards. I find it really cool. I like finding all those little threads and making my mind maps even more detailed. So that is my mind map. That is my method for mind mapping tarot readings. Please be gentle with me. I did this on the fly. It's very messy. I do often bullet point or just jot down my ideas first, and then I go into writing it out when I've got a bit more of an idea of what I will write out, but I was doing this very much. You saw the whole thought process. So, and I obviously don't usually talk to a camera when I'm doing these, so it was a little bit uh, looser and messier than it often would be. And I didn't ask a question, which I would recommend you do. I love Patrick readings, I love multi-deck readings for this kind of thing, but having a question or just some kind of unifying theme, like I say, I did one the other day where I just, my, my question was just, I feel stuck. And then I pulled a bunch of cards and see saw what they had to say in response to, I feel stuck. And it was kind of like, well, why do I feel stuck? How do I come unstuck? Why is being stuck good? Why is being stuck bad? Um, and you can kind of riff on that, whereas this was just very open-ended. But anyway, I hope that you found this valuable and interesting. I know that some people have been interested in this mind mapping thing, so I really hope that you have enjoyed. I hope this has answered your questions. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments. I will do my best to answer them. I can always do a follow-up video if necessary. And like I said, this is the first video in a bit of a series that I want to do about how I read the tarot. Emphasis on reading. It's about reading the connections between the cards, not just knowing what the cards mean. So 
this is a method for visualizing those connections between the cards. I've got a who, what, when, where, why, and how video coming, which is about asking those six questions of a single tarot card to get six different perspectives that you can then use to connect to other cards with. I've also been playing around with the idea of like tarot literacy, so that's another video coming. I hope that you will enjoy, I hope that you are enjoying, please let me know what you think and and that's it from me, I'll let you go, I think this has been a long one so thank you so much for watching, if you've made it this far I really hope you have enjoyed, give me a like if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, check out my Etsy, my Patreon, all that good stuff is always linked in the description box and I will see you in the next one, bye bye!